time. Hi guys. The white. We're live. <laughs> it's uh it's Saturday. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we have a gal in here who is buying a sewing machine and Lisa is helping get all of the bits and parts together. So, um, how is everybody doing on this fine Saturday? It's a little bit dreary out there. Don't you think? Oh, and look, the phone is ringing the phone. and the phone, the phone always ringing. rings. <laughs> Wonder pets. Cause that's what always happens. I did send you the email, Lisa. Um, <laughs> I just don't have you linked in yet. Okay. <laughs> so um, today's class is on the pillow. The pillow is a lot of fun. Lisa and I have been working on diligently on our little pieces and parts in the store today. So um, if you are going to be stitching along with us today, we are going to stitch one live and then we're going to talk about all of the things not to do and um and then we are going to um talk about how to put it together and how to fuzz it and what to do with all the fuzz and all that good stuff so hi shirley sandra pam debbie lisa's right over here she can hear you hi. <laughs> there you go <laughs> um so um what i am gonna do is i'm gonna switch over to the camera so that you can see what we have um, on in our hoop. So here we have our hoop. Um, all we have in the hoop today is cutaway stabilizer. So you need six pieces of cutaway stabilizer to do this. Um, Judy says, I hear this is kind of hairy to do. So um, if Harry, if by Harry, you mean fuzzy, definitely. Very, very fuzzy. <laughs> like this I'm, is, I'm wearing fuzz. Yeah, we're, we are covered in like, um, in uh, velveteen uh, fuzzies everywhere. So um, you basically just do six of the same thing. And then we're going to put the whole pro project together. So um, I successfully did two of them wrong already today. And Lisa is perfect. So she has done all of hers correct. <laughs> And she was entirely too busy to help me not screw up this morning. So Sorry. I'm going to help you guys not screw up today. So <laughs> it'll be lots of fun. So um, what I have here is just the hoop with the stabilizer. And, you know, um, whenever you have your hoop and your stabilizer alone, always make sure that you have that screw tightened down really well. Um, and then I'm going to start. And then what this is going to do is it's going to give me my placement line for the batting. All right, so we have white thread in the machine and we have um, our box. This box is to let us know exactly where to put our batting. What do you think Hayden's doing? I, I did ask um, Tony, I said, maybe just give him a ring to I, see. I sent him a text, he didn't reply, so I'm just gonna be really rude and call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you are following along in the instructions, um, we have hooped our stabilizer we've stitched our batting placement line and now we are placing our batting in the completed so it can completely stitch that down so in kimberbell fashion she does recommend that you tape this down um because i work with lisa and she is a bad influence on me i'm going to be a rebel and i'm not going to do that I know you can't see me. Thank you. 
right? <laughs> so weird. Marion says she can hear us, but she can't see you on YouTube. I, um, uh, I'm hoping that you can actually, can you see what's in the hoop? Because that's the only thing that I'm showing right now. Um, hopefully you don't just have a black, a blank screen. Um, my screen here tells me that I've got a green check for both Facebook and YouTube. So I'm hoping that that's okay. All right. So we have batting and it's stitched down. And um, now what we need to do is we need to trim this away. So we've got Lisa's favorite scissors and we are just trimming this around. And um, we will eventually have our, um, our third camera up and running in just a moment. Where's the camera? Okay, trying not to um, hit the camera and make you guys all seasick here. Do, 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 do. All right, you see the hoop. That's good. That's all you should see right now. You should be able to hear my voice, but just see my hoop. <laughs> all right, so now that we've done this, um, we have tacked down the batting. We have trimmed the batting. And then the next placement stitch is going to give us the placement for the uh, linen fabric, which is going to be the beige or cream colored fabric. It's going to look like this. And if you are paying attention, you might notice that this stitch is actually um, about a quarter of an inch away from the other stitch. That is so that we've actually trimmed the batting out of our seam allowance. We don't always do that in Kimberbell projects, but we are definitely doing that in this one. Good. Looks good. All right, I'll be I just have to crawl up the ceiling here. Okay. All right, and we've got this placed in. We want to try to make sure that we've got it sort of centered all the way around the hoop. All right. And if you feel more comfortable taping this in, go ahead and tape this in. But this is now going to stitch this piece down. And this is going to go around more than one time. All right, so um, now that we have this piece tacked down, um, we've talked about this many times with Kimberbell Designs. She doesn't have you trimming the excess fabric off, so you're gonna actually leave that in place. And so the next thing that we are gonna do, if you're following along in your instructions, we're on step number five, um, and we are going to change the thread to match the applique velveteen stitch. This is the applique placement line. I'll tell you a little secret. Lisa and I did not change our thread at all. We left white thread in the entire time we did this. Um, you could definitely change your thread um, so that you could see things a little bit clearer when we get to the um, to the placement lines a little bit later. And um, but but we're just going to keep this same color thread in. So I'm just going to hit the go button. And what this is going to do is this going to give us one more stitch outline. And this is going to be where, um, when this finishes, we're going to place um, our first piece of velveteen fabric. So you're actually going to be using four pieces of the velveteen fabric for this particular project. The first time I did this, um, because you know what happens when you start and you stop, um, I was paying really close attention to the instructions. And um, I knew that I had to put some velveteen down. 
and um, I saw it's I it stopped and then I got up and my instructions fell on the ground and they flipped to the next page and when I opened it I thought oh this is where I put all three of my pieces of velveteen down and I put all three pieces down so um, don't do that the next step is one piece of velveteen not three that is um, what you do at the very end of the project. So Lisa and I have sort of determined that the we can't really see the big picture as to why we're doing this actual step. I don't know why it needed to be this detailed here because um, I really just needed to know where my placement was. So um, if you are super duper impatient, um, you could probably skip over that step. And Lisa and I might have done that once or twice in full disclosure. So the velveteen fabric is, um, it, it has texture on both sides. Uh, you're gonna want the part that feels velvet, velvety for the velveteen. Um, the other side um, feels just like uh, kind of a canvas, for lack of a better word. So um, pretty side of the fabric up. And again, uh, Kimberbell does instruct you to tape this down. If you feel the need to tape this down, please do. This piece here becomes the base of your chenilled fabric. Um, again, you want to put the one layer here, not the three layers. So um, don't put your your whole stack of velveteen here, just that single layer. Fashionably late? Yes. Good timing. I might be a little warm. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. I have to just start cutting if you want. Okay. I can't do it without. No. Mm -hmm. Am I where I'm supposed to be? Looks, that wise? looks perfect. Yep. Okay. All right, and so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take this off and I'm gonna pan over to Lisa here and she is going, to, it's like gonna be like movie magic. She is um, cutting away, frantically, right? <laughs> she is cutting away all of the little bits and parts inside. So um, on step number six, it's going to tell you to remove the fabric from the outer layer, which we've already done in this little picture here. And then you're going to move, remove the fabric from the inner layer, um, which is what Lisa is doing right now. You can see we are not cutting through the entire project. You want to leave your linen yep. there. You're not going through the batting in this instance. All she is doing is cutting through that velveteen. And you can see it's kind of fuzzing all over the place. It's going everywhere. This so is when I'm getting into these really, really tight spots, I'm rolling 
my scissors into that point so that I'm getting up as tight as I can. It seems, oops. You didn't go all the way over here. I didn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. All right. So here we go. And now I'm on the inner A little diamond there. And you do want to try to get right up to those. This um, edge is super fuzzy. So it looks a lot thicker kind of all by itself um, than it actually does even. Um... Hi, D. Hi, Linda, Sharon, Nancy, Carol. We have a nice group of ladies today. I'm going to miss this next week. Right? <laughs> we can make a plan maybe Wednesday afternoon. What do you want to make? And you can come in and we can sew together. Right? We, we'd have to FaceTime each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have um, the base. So I've got, like I said, a lot of fuzzies. Um, and I am trying to get rid of all that excess because it's going to do a candle wicking stitch right on top of here. So on all of these stitches, it's going to candle wick. So if you have lots of outside fuzz, it will show. A little bit is okay. Um, and I suppose if it was equally fuzzy all the way around, that would be fine too. Um, at home, when I was doing this and I, I made a pillow just out of regular cotton, um, I kept a roller like a lint roller for your clothes and stuff. And I defuzzed everything before I went. Yes. Swap. 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 <laughs> She's like, swap. I'm like, you want me to do what? <laughs> <laughs> so before you switch real quick. Yep. When you see these areas in here, I'm really taking a little bit and I'm pulling up as I'm snipping. So I'm not getting that lower layer. Mm -hmm. And then I can, um, you know, sometimes it takes a couple of them, but just get a hole that you can shove your scissor into and then you can trim and work your way towards a quarter i slid my seam ripper in there i did not i just used my scissors she so see i snipped a hole slizzers. and then i slizzers. my slizzers i slithered right into that little point and then i worked my way around so that's all i did seam ripper certainly will work as well yeah just make sure you don't poke all the way through lisa's got the battle wings. she's been talking about them today oh my gosh so i've got like a blister here i've got cuts over here <laughs> I'm not really sure how I got one all the way over here, but there you go. What are you, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Right. So, all right. So I'm keep going. Gonna Sewing is hard work. <laughs> go back to we're live on our embroidery field here. <laughs> so um, what we are going to be doing right now, this is step number seven. So my thread color says number seven, and this is the applique decorative stitch outline. So I'm going to just hit the go button. And this is that candle wicking stitch that Lisa was talking about. I was trying to blow the fuzz on my um, mask. It doesn't work, I, does I had it? my mask on. No, I, I can't tell you how many times I tried it. Um, I'm embarrassed to say more than once. Your face gets really warm, right? You're like, whoa, it's not working. <laughs> it's not doing anything. Right. One of these mine? Nope, that one's. You've actually got two of your own going. I did start. It could be yours. I just. No, I think that's mine. Is that your last one? Uh -huh. So, um, I just grabbed another hoop. I didn't know where your fabric. I had it over there because she. Um, I, I couldn't find another hoop. Right. It's gold. <laughs> yes. Um, I think the water soluble is a great choice. It is what I would use. Is that what she's using? I'll grab it. I'm cool for um, And um, I would use either a sticky tear away or hoop it. Okay? If you're hooping it, make sure you're not stretching. Ready. Okay? <laughs> you're welcome. That would have been, I tossed that stabilizer to Tony. That would have been funny if it popped him on the head. Bopped him on the head, bounced yes. off his head, and then hit her. <laughs> that wouldn't have been funny. <laughs> no, it, it can't, actually would have been. It would have been bad, but it would have been funny. funny. True, true, true. All right. So we're candle wicking. And we're candle wicking. And we're candle wicking. And we're candle wicking some more. Can you really see the candle wicking stitches underneath all of the fuzz? I can see it very clearly on my cotton. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy and, um, as I was talking. Um, the edges just seem really thick 
So I kind of went back and I tried cleaning it up, mm-hmm. but no, because I keep thinking, it's too wide. Yeah, I, we need to get rid of more, more. I think even when we're done. I keep thinking this is um this is like a waste of time. It's, and that it's probably, not on a standard set fabrics. Right, right. Like on on this, it just seems like you aren't going to see all of the fun, the funness of this. The funness. Do you like that? Is that a good word? It is totally a word. All right. So, funner is not a word. Right? If Look you at, ask my kids, I was correcting them last night. Now we're all in. So, um, we're, nope. Lisa's, your fingers are in. Okay. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> okay, that one's done. Woohoo! Louisa says, the videos are awesome. Thanks for inspiring us to do our bellow boxes. Besides the fact that you gals are such a hoot, you can tell you love what you do. May your holidays be wonderful. Oh, right back at you, sweetie. Yes, thank you. We really do enjoy this. Um, it's funny because more twice today, someone asked us um, today if we were, um, if we rehearsed these. And um, Lisa and I, it, actually, when somebody asked us, uh, Tony was standing next to me, um, and he started laughing because um, the the hilarious thing is is that um, we're we're usually we're really good. We're like we got plenty of time to get our stuff together. We got plenty of time, and then all of a sudden, my phone dings and it says you have 15 minutes before you go live. And I'm like, oh shoot, I don't have the camera set up. Do we have our stuff? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna talk about? So we're usually just running around like we're crazy people. So we're hot, um, crazy yes. people, very very hot. <laughs> So uh, we don't actually rehearse. Um, I'm glad that it doesn't that it, it doesn't appear like we're like bumbling um, crazy we're not people. Bumbling crazy people. No, we might be crazy people, um, but yeah. that's okay. I, I don't think "might" <laughs> is the appropriate word for that. Yes. Lisa's working on um, shaving. It's like you almost need a razor blade to shave it I'm down. Telling you. Yeah. But yeah, the candle wicking stitch, it's just so pretty. It's, it's very just, pretty. It's such a shame to not see it. Yeah. So let's make it see. Tiffany says, hi, Lisa. Good to see you. I'll have to stop in there sometime and shop the goodies. I think that sounds fantastic, Tiffany. Next week, we are here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And Sarah will be here for a little bit on Tuesday. Yes. I'm part-time in it next week. <laughs> Your vacation time in it next week. <laughs> We're all frantically taking our vacations before Jean leaves us. Yes, because pretty much we can't vacation until he comes back. There's not enough bodies here. Yeah, it'll be very hard. Um, oh! What did you do? I broke a thread. Whoa. <laughs> I have a sad face. I got to admit, I really love the sad face on the right? screens. Not that I like to have that happen. Right. But I really do love the sad, the little tear. Oh, it's yucky too. Can... It probably needs a new needle. We've been doing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Just such one. <laughs> We've been neglectful with this needle. Oh, it was working. It was working. Isn't that what you guys all do at home? It's still working. All right. All better. Hi, Jeanette. This has been a weird day. What? I think it's like. It's like Groundhog's Day. I feel like I say the same thing every time we get live. It's crazy. It's busy. Holy crap. How did it get to be this time again? <laughs> that is like, that. that's just it. That's just what we say all the time around here. Because it's crazy all the time. Again. Do you want to show them what you're doing? Sure. So Lisa is trying to, we were just talking about whether or not you can see um, what's going on. The candle wicks. The it's... candle wicks. This pillow that I actually had done. Say that um, again. They might have lost our um, our co- if the audio clicked for 
a second. Okay. So, so um, the one piece of the pillow that I actually had all cut and fuzzed and, and everything um, is what I'm playing with at the moment while that is stitching. And what I'm doing is going around and trimming so that you can actually see that candle wicking stitch around the fuzz. So I am literally going around, I did the insides and now I'm going around the outsides and I am shaving. <laughs> I am shaving and giving it a little buzz. Its beard is way too full. So we're just giving it a little trim. And basically I am revealing that stitch. So you can see that section that, that I, thank you, Tony. Sorry about that. I didn't do the cash. No okay. problem. Thank I you. got it. Thanks. Um, so I am revealing the candle wicking stitch on the outside and the inside layers. So it's already cut. It's already fuzzed. I am just fluffing that up and removing excess fuzz. Fuzz. Because mm -hmm. there's lots and lots of fuzz. All right. So the machine has stopped stitching. We've done the candle wicking stitching, so we did the fancy stitching that we're not sure that you're going to be able to see clearly. <laughs> you just got to play with it a little bit. Um, and we are about to start um, step number eight. So this is where you are going to place your three, three, so I have um, the three layers, right? So this is, and I've got to make sure that they're all facing up. So I've got the, the velveteen texture to the top. All right, and then I'm going to place all three of those on top of this. And this is actually stitch number eight. And if you are paying attention in your instructions or your destructions, um, we are on page six and we are on the top. It is in section seven. And we are, um, this is step B of se section seven. So I've got the three velveteen pieces right side up. And of course, she does recommend that you tape them in place. Um, I'm so, sure you guys will be shocked to hear I did not do that. Yes, uh, we did not tape them in place. And um, so there could be a little bit of bunching that happens, but the truth is that doesn't matter because um, it doesn't seem to bunch in like the orange peel shape. It seems to bunch sort of between that and you're actually cutting that all out. So. Um, don't worry if you get a little pleat there, um, but please, we are not the, um, I'm not trying to tell you not to tape. I am just telling, telling you, you, what we did. Um, you should, you should do whatever definitely you're comfortable read with. the instructions and do what you are comfortable with. We have many people who have had, um, who have sewn through their fingers and it's caused issues. So um, be very cautious when you do that. That's my, my public service announcement. Mm -hmm. I did sew through my finger once, but I'm I was wearing even more sewing and not embroidering. And it was because somebody bumped me while I was free motion quilting. Oh, very nice. That no, it wasn't. Not a very good friend. Right? All right. That piece is set. So have you all been doing your projects? Is everybody, um, you guys are all caught up, right? Right. I haven't done my big 3D house. You did your big 3D house, I did. didn't you? I haven't glued it all together, sewn it all together yet, but it is stitched. So I think I like this. Mm-hmm. Trimming, taking the stitches out before I cut. Before you cut. And you're like Still see through, exactly like, a single layer at a time. I am cutting. To cut through. I'm only cutting one at a time. That was really hard to cut through multiple layers. Well, when I was making the pillow for my house. Mm -hmm. I literally got like carpal tunnel issue. I couldn't use my right hand for hours. I, I got to the point where I just couldn't cut because mm -hmm. I cut through so many layers in such a short period of time. And it said, uh, uh no more. So what we just did were the basting stitches. 
Um, the basic, uh, there is a little note on here that says that you can change the thread to a visible color to stitch the chenille basting stitch. This will be removed later on. Um, I did point out earlier that we were not going to be changing our thread, but that would have been when you were going to change your thread. If you were going to, that would have been the moment. And then now you're going to change your thread back, if you did change your thread, back to the color of the velveteen. Because right now we're going to do the chenille lines and these lines will stay. So when I also did the pillow at home, um, you know how when you're doing, um, you know, those straight stitches, sometimes the bobbin thread just doesn't always pick up yes. like you expect. I had a few of these lines that did not stitch. And it was because the bobbin thread didn't come up. Mm -hmm. But of course, the machine kept going and it picked it up on the next line. Right. So I did have a few random. On all of the ones on this, it didn't. I think it's a rougher fabric. So oh, the sure. thread is staying a little bit easier, if you will. Um, but... I had, I think, a total of six lines I had to go back and fill in when I was doing this with cotton. Um, so look before you, uh, when you're done with this stitch, take a look and make sure all of the lines have shown up and stitched. Um, if not, just use your needle plus and minus and go back in and stitch them before you take anything out of the hoop. Um, and hopefully and that will make your life a little bit easier. Yeah, it's these lines that she's talking yep. about. Those are exactly the lines. And those are permanent lines. Those are not um, getting removed or anything. So it's important that they're there. Otherwise, your chenille won't look like right. Right. You won't have anything to chenille between. No. Right. Did you tell them I forgot my damn tool? I did not. Lisa, now it's definitely not for kids. She just swore. I did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Not like our oh. show is normally PG rated, but um, oh, today definitely goodness. not. I do apologize. No, that just slipped right out. <laughs> when I um, when you upload a video to YouTube, not that anybody here maybe is doing that or not, but you have it asks you, um, was this video created for children? Uh, <laughs> nope. No. So um, I just thought that was kind of funny. Elisa forgot to bring her chenille tool in. I didn't mean it. It's a fuzzer. No, it's the cutter. It's the cutter. Oh, your little. Um, it's a little rotary cutter. Yes, with the little it has on the bottom. The, um, it has a long, mm -hmm. about a two inch piece. It's just plastic. Yeah. But it's a two inch piece of plastic that you shove inside the tube between the stitches. stitches yep. And then when you push, the rotary cutter cuts, but it only cuts through the pieces that you have on top. So you're right. not accidentally cutting. Um, into the fabric that you're leaving there. Layer number one is staying intact. Um, Misty, I do not know when the Kimberbell Velveteen will be available for purchase. They just said coming in 2021. It said 2021. It didn't give a time, and we haven't seen any emails on it. No, we haven't had any emails on it yet, so um, I don't. And I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it popping up at any of the any of our um, distributors. Now, how did I even? Say there was that little catalog type thing in here that right. talked about everything, and it said that in there. Just very imagine that. It just says watch for more colors in 2021. There is no more hints other than that, and I do think here it says. Velveteen colors and a pillow product line mm -hmm. in 2021. If I had to wager, I guess, I think they're probably, I would bet they're probably not saying right now. Um, shipping has gotten really out of hand yeah. um, lately. We have so little control over what's going on. And yes, Dee, we will be participating in the Kimberbell fill in the blank project. Um, we have them coming. Um, we are probably going to do some kind of Kimberbell of the month with the fill in the blanks where you'll have the opportunity to be guaranteed um, a project and then um, we'll sell the leftovers um, just loose in the shop. Um, how the Kimberbell fill in the blank project works. Um, Kimberbell provides a blank uh January's blank happens to be a chambray. Um, it happens to be a chambray tote, um, kind of like 
their um it, it looks very similar to the size of their previous tote bags mm -hmm. it's just like a light um light blue. light blue like a light denim color um so that is the january project and um when you purchase a blank you automatically get the embroidery design um, for that blank at no additional charge. Um, the blanks can be shipped. Um, you cannot get the design any other way as of this moment. Um, I do not know if that will be something that they plan on changing. Um, they are telling us that the blanks are going to be um, most likely uh, one of a kind, so um, it will be available as the blank, but it may not make it into the regular main line. Um, and as of right now, you will not be able to get the embroidery designs any other way. You would have to buy the blank in order to receive the embroidery design. And the embroidery design could be mailed to you. So if emailed to you, if you are far away and um, you know you want to participate, um, you know, you could say, I just want, you know, give me all three blanks at the same time. We can mail them to you after the third one comes, but we could email you the embroidery designs each month as they come available. And then you could use them on your other projects or um, so on and so forth. But the only way to get those particular designs would be to actually purchase the blank. blank. And some way to put that on our store. Yeah, I would As, like you know, to do a dollar reservation or something stupid. Yeah, yeah, I would. We would like to add that to the um, to our little web store. Um, I think it's a good place for reservations. So um, look for some sort of a reservation. Uh, relatively, Action. yeah, maybe in the next week. That might be something I can work on. Um, so you know, it, it's maybe just a dollar reservation fee, um, and and uh, I'll have the pictures of the projects and if you want to participate um then you can make the the dollar reservation and we'll take that off of the first month's project yep louisa says shout out to lisa for the great scan and cut project made all three of my kits yesterday with her daughter they will be gifts for her in-laws for christmas with her grandson's high school picture. Aww. Aww. <laughs> That's fantastic. And Sandy says she has a chenille cutter. However, it's still in the box and never been opened. Go oh, figure. Totally open it. Yeah, you'll want it to is, for it this. It's so nice. <laughs> I'm always so nervous when I go to cut that I'm going to get the bottom layer, which is it the end of the world? No, but it certainly does make it look different. Um, you know, because you can actually see in this case, you would see the linen color shining through where it's supposed to be solid white. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just so nice. You can literally count layers. You just shove that little pick part through there and then push. Mm -hmm. and it's so perfect. It's awesome. <laughs> there we go. Everything we say sounds so wrong, right? It certainly does. <laughs> you betcha. If you were to take that out of context. <laughs> Shove that pick right there, <laughs> you bet. Mm -hmm. Oh. So this is really, um, we're coming up to the end part of this embroidery design. This is it. It's got one more little orange peel petal to do. And, um, and then the embroidery part is completed. Then you have all of the work. All of the work. Yeah, all the work starts. That was the fun, easy part. Made more fun listening to us ramble about stuff. Stuff, lots of stuff. Lots and lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that works actually better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can actually see it. It's not perfect. You've still got some outer little extra. But I think that's way better. I would be surprised if I had some form of carpal tunnel at this point in my life. You want me to loan you a brace? You got me covered? Oh, our 
darn hands. Sewing is hard work. It is. Who knew it could be it's like it's like a full so contact hard. sport. I'm telling you. Wrist injuries. You know it's the worst back. injury I think I have here is literally walking into machines when I come around a corner. Oh. I have had so many bruises on my shins since I started working here. Because mm -hmm. I turn a corner and somebody put something on the floor that wasn't there a minute ago and yep. bam, bam right into the shin. Mm -hmm. Well, there's that time I dropped that old machine on my leg. Shin, yeah, yeah, that that's bad. I have, yeah, I, there's still a dent, dent. in my leg. Mm -hmm. I walked into something too. I don't remember what we moved a table, and it the was corners? Like the corner. Yeah, mm -hmm. that low table. I walked right into it with my knee. <laughs> it's just the right height. Yes, this is a dangerous job. Yeah, when it's I, certainly much more physical than I think I ever anticipated it that it would be. Yeah, when I worked at the eye doctor. Um, I would I would laugh at how many times you would leave a drawer or a door Something open. open. You would do it. Like even just you would think you're I'm I'm trying to get around, be right back right? into it. Right. Um, and then you just turn around right into it. I always had I always have bruises like right around my like my hips and my knees. Does your husband ask you how you got those things? Yes. Yes, so does mine. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. It wasn't like, doing anything fun, I can tell you that. <laughs> right? And that's big. How do you not remember that? Well, well, I got five of them today, so I don't know which one that one was. Oh, look, I broke the needle or the thread again. I didn't break the needle, just the thread. I definitely think we've um, uh, exceeded the life of this uh, that needle. Is needle. Dead. Yes. So if you have this happen a lot, it's probably it's time probably for a new needle. We certainly um, put we this exceeded one exceeded the life of that one through. Because I don't think I've changed it since we started these projects. I didn't either. So, no, we've done 12 projects with that. That's probably a little overkill. Yeah. And then whatever we've demoed. Oh, I try my best to not actually stitch. During the demo, so. <laughs> you said that on live TV. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, it's not because I actually don't want to. It is totally, when I started working here, they talked about how, um, you know, well, so-and-so sold a machine and didn't even stitch one stitch. They just said, this is fantastic. Don't you want to buy it? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where that comes from. It's like this extra sense of pride that I can actually sell a machine without showing how it actually works. Now, all of these people that are watching it, the next time they come to buy a sewing machine, they're going to be like, like yeah, I'm not going to stitch. I'm not gonna buy this until you stitch. <laughs> And I will be just fine with that. <laughs> Absolutely fine with that. All right. And so that was the the wonderful sound of the embroidery design saying you have completed this embroidery design. So, so video magic. Video magic. Yes. We're going to pop that out of the hoop. And then you will magically. Ooh. What <laughs> and was then that? I was popping it out of the hoop. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Okay, Ooh. Pop. Look Boom. Boom. There it goes. <laughs> So this is now what we have. So we have um, the basting stitches around the outside of all of these things here. And then we have basting stitches on the outside, both it, outer and inner here. It's really hard to see that. Can you tip it uh, up towards your camera? Maybe the, there you go. So they can right, see. So yep. there is basting stitches on the outside and then a regular straight stitch in the center. And then there's basting stitches all the way around the edges here. And then these lines here are going to stay there. So what we have to do is one of two things. One, you need to cut away all of the excess fabric, which is on the outside. And then in this case, the inside of the basting stitches. And then remove all of the basting stitches because you can't cut and push that through when there's stitches all the way there. It just doesn't work. Trust me, I've tried. Because I thought, I don't want to remove all those. There's got to be a better way. I can do this. Yeah, there, it, there's not a better way, guys. So this is what we're going to do. I've done this both ways. Um, option number one is to literally take, I do not recommend all three layers at one time. Um, you will really get kind of like the pyramid effect of a little waterfall going down the outside edges. You won't get right tight to the stitches in any way possible if you try to do all three. So, which is why my hands are starting to hurt <laughs> because I've done this a couple of times. So I am literally getting as tight to those basting stitches as possible and I'm removing. Now, what happens if we accidentally cut one of those basting stitches? Great. Who cares? Perfect. <laughs> one less we have to take out later. <laughs> All right. So we're really getting as close as we possibly can. If, um, 
if this is the way you want to go, this is probably the way everybody's taught you to do it from day one. Mm -hmm. And know. that's what the instructions. That's what the instructions are going to tell you. So I had this thought, well, what if I took the basting stitches out first? I don't know that this would work for all different types of fabrics, but it certainly does work um, for this fabric. All right. So you can see a little bit clearer now um, the outside edge because I've actually made a dent mm -hmm. in the amount of fabric there. What I'm going to do is show you how to remove those basting stitches. What I've done. Oh, my phone's ringing. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. All right. So can you see that? Yep. So I have a point on all four of these little outer, what'd you call them? Orange peels? Orange peels. So at the very top, you've got a stitch. So I've got a hold of that and I'm just going to break the point. All right. And all I did is I took the other side and I pushed. So I take stitch number two and push and then just keep going all the way down. And I know it's farther away and you can't see as well. And I'm sorry, but it's really hard to do this when I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm literally just taking that piece and I'm pulling it all the way through. Once I get kind of kind of too long and it's getting stuck somewhere, guess what? Pop it and pull it out. Or if you can't pull it out, cut it with your seam ripper and then start all over again. So I have an end again and I'm just going around my orange peel mm -hmm. to remove this. I was just getting ready to say, notice she's not putting the seam ripper all the way in and it just kind of and almost then it, went and in. And then it almost <laughs> did. So it's very easy to do. Um, and this is one option. Now on the outside edges, um, I can have, I have that little bit of a lip from where I cut. So you can see where it's getting harder and harder to see where that stitch is. Once I've cut, it becomes a little bit harder to see where that basting stitch actually is. Right. So I thought maybe this would work and it did. Um, is it the right way to do this? No. So <laughs> going to be perfectly honest. But it did help me um, because I have a flat surface. I can see exactly where that stitch is. So it's much easier to grab hold of it and pull that out of the way. Um, if you this had... is kind of the way I look at projects is, okay, here's my instructions. I know that that way is going to work. Can I find an easier one? Right. And sometimes the answer is yes. And sometimes it's no. Um, you know, sometimes you just got to do whatever it is that they've told you to do. Um, if I am cutting through in here, so um, there's actually a hole. Can you guys see? All right, I'm actually, can you see how there's no tip to my scissor? It actually, I can feel, and there's a groove to put that into. So it's really easy to come through here and cut and get all the way around there. All right, so I certainly can do that. But then when I go back up and I have this stack, of fuzz mm -hmm. that I'm trying to find the basting stitch in. The cotton, it wasn't that hard because it was still flat. Sure. This just fuzzes immediately. So right. it was much, much harder to see what I was doing. Which is probably um, why they recommended that we another color. change to another color. So here's what else I found. Every once in a while, the basting stitch gets stitched down yeah. inside one of these straight lines that are going across and I can't get it can't, out. Can't get it out. Yeah. So if I had red thread there, I would be kind of ticked off because I couldn't get it out, at least without picking out a stitch that's supposed to stay there. Right. Which is why I didn't change colors because yeah. I've done this before and ran into that problem. Um, so I did leave that um, in the white, like as she was showing on the video. You certainly can change it. It will make it a lot easier to find them. The problem, of course, comes into you actually being able to remove them all, um, which sewing is never a perfect world, is it, ladies? Um, you know, there seems to always be something that's pushing against whatever it is that we're trying to do. So either way, try it both ways and see what you like. So here I don't have a line to follow, but guess what? I have straight stitch lines. So all I'm going is from one to the next and I can push right up on that and it makes it nice and easy to cut and I removed that basting stitch. So mm -hmm. I personally found that way to be just a little bit easier with this fabric, um, with the cottons. And I didn't fuzz this yet. It was a lot easier to see because it didn't fuzz automatically. So you can see really easily where the edge of that is. Mm -hmm. And I can pick out those stitches and you can really see the, um, and you can really see stitch. the candle wicking stitch here because it's not 
poofing out on the edge automatically. Um, I did start fuzzing some spots of this. Um, the center actually fuzzed with my fingernail, so I literally just picked at it, um, and it fuzzed up that area really, really nice. Um, these, if you kind of, a nail file really does work the best, mm -hmm. but your fingernail can really get a nice rough edge. And rough is really what we're looking for here. Mm -hmm. That gives it that pop. So, after next. this, <laughs> what do you do once you have all of these pieces? Um, well, you have to do two things. You have to prep your back. And um, do you have a back over here? I do. I had a good friend who took care of that for me. Movie magic. Movie magic. So what you're going to do at some point during the process of this, um, I'm going to flip over to here. So I have, we have two backing pieces. Um, and the backing pieces are um, rectangles. So you've got a 14 inch long side and then two shorter sides. <laughs> two 14 inch <laughs> sides and two shorter sides. <laughs> uh -huh. That's what she said. Um, so you've got rectangles, right? So the instructions recommend that you fold two quarter inch strips. Strips. Edges. Edges. Fold over a quarter inch. And then press, fold over. Fold over a quarter inch. So press. you're making a hem. And then you're just going to stitch. So Half you stitch. want to have um, a nice finished edge. And did you use the white thread that was over there? I did. Yep. So um, even though this is linen colored, it blends in really nice. Mm -hmm. It's not like, holy crap. So I would not worry too much about what thread you have in there unless it's like, you know, lime green or some real funky something. Right. Um, you know, your standard white that we keep in our machines, you know, 90% of the time for sewing is going to work perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and this is sewing thread. You certainly can use the embroidery thread if you would like. Mm -hmm. um, the ends are going to be stitched in, so okay. construction-wise won't matter. So if you have mm -hmm. that, um, it will work just fine. So that is the back, mm -hmm. and that's going to basically be just an envelope fold once we get to that point. And that's as far as I read. So what we're going to do <laughs> next is we have hopefully six of these, right? So we're going to have all six of those. So I did, as I was running past the, the camera a few times um, when we first got started here, mm -hmm. I did hear her say that you would notice that this outside stitch, the squaring rectangle mm -hmm. is a quarter inch away from the outside edges here on both top and bottom. So that is actually your cut line. That is where you are actually cutting. If for whatever reason, things shifted a little bit. So what I did when I was actually cutting is I made sure that that point right there was at a quarter inch, whether it was slightly over that, that line or not, didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. I just needed that to be a quarter inch so that when I sew it together to its neighbor, it's going to kiss that little area. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. So if that's too small, make it just a little bit bigger. The seam will be in the, the stitched piece here will be in the seam. Nobody will see it. So mm -hmm. don't freak out about that. Make sure that that is that quarter inch. Um, or you can just cross your fingers and cut right on the stitch. <laughs> Either way. So I used actual measuring to make sure that I was good because every once in a while things pull and shift a little bit as we're stitching. So I wanted to make sure that that was good. Yep. Once you have that. They recommend that when you square those blocks, they should be five by seven. Five by seven. Yep. Okay. Um, super easy. You can make sure that that's nice. Um, so what we are actually... Um, going to end up is a 14 by 14 pillow. So that's where um, your designs are at. So we're going to square all of those, which is the next one yep, right here. One. All right. So once you have everything done, you're going to line them up. So you're going to have two rows of three. Okay. And we're going to sew those across. So we're going to sew the top three together. <laughs> that's really hard, isn't it? Is, it? Yes. And then the bottom three together. All right. So then we have those two sets. At that point, um, it's really easy to match up that center point mm -hmm. when you're sewing that. Super, super easy to make sure you're doing that. You're going to just put right sides together, so a quarter inch seam, and then move on. When you get to the top and the bottom, I did make sure that my points matched up so that not necessarily um, this point, that was one spot that I'm looking at, but I also want the crease of um, that seam. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly like that. I don't want this line here to be really wonky because it's going to not look nice. Mm -hmm. All right. If it's a hair off here or there, nobody's going to care. It's the fold of the fabric. Right. But you want to make sure that you're matching up these guys here and these seams here. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that you pin it. Use a clip. Um, you don't want to distort your seam before you've even started by, pish by pinning that. So um, 
I am just covered in fuzz. <laughs> it Everybody looks is, like it snowed on my lap. I going to think we worked really hard today. I, it snowed on my lap. I'm yeah. telling you. Um, so after that, um, I did press my seams open so that I had a nice smooth finish. Um, this is cutaway, so it's going to have a little bit of body to it. It's not going to just, it's not, <laughs> we both do the same. <laughs> um, so you're going to have six. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you're going to take those backings. So once you have something that looks like that, you're going to have your backings and because we are going to do both pieces, it doesn't matter which one you put on top. Mm -hmm. All right. If it, if you only do one, because I just don't have time to do the other one, you that want okay. the one that you stitched to be on the bottom so that when you turn it, it will be on the top. Mm -hmm. um, so all we're going to do is create a 14 basically inch piece. And this is probably done easiest if you have your 14 inch top mm -hmm. on your table Sitting right there. Yeah. And then you're going to just match up your corners and you will have that overlap mm -hmm. in the center, depending upon exactly how your sizing went. So right. you can make that match up perfectly. I, again, I clipped these to make sure that they didn't fold in. Mm -hmm. So I put my wonder clips. Those are such a wonderful little thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I put one on each, the top and the bottom, because that bottom one's the one you actually care about. Right. The top, you can see if it's moving, but you need to make sure that that bottom one's not Flipping folding under. in underneath or something. that's going to be on the top. When that's going to be what's going to be on the top. Exactly. So put a clip on both pieces of that. Yep. If you want to clip your corner, I don't mean clip as to cut. I mean put a wonder clip there to right. keep everything in line. You certainly can. Um, it just depends on your personal preference. Got Ooh. anything else? No. So sorry. Anyways, make sure you line the raw edges up, not your finished yep. pieces, because those are the part that form your envelope on the enter that is and correct. the enter on the side. And so that is, that's your instructions on the back. So um, here is where we talked about um, making the folds and top stitching. Here is where they're showing you, you've got your pillow base and then you're placing your other pieces down. And then here is where you stitch. You're and gonna so stitch a quarter inch all, all the way, way around, around because um, there's an opening in the middle in with the that middle fold. With your fold. And you're just gonna flip that, poke out those corners with mm -hmm. your beautiful turning tool, um, whether it's the OESD or the Floriani turning tools, whatever it is that you have in your repertoire. You might even have one of those old pink thang or purple things. Purple things, yeah. I always think that's the funniest name. Who came right. up with that stuff? And why is my necklace going all over the place? We're easily distracted. I, I'm looking, I'm like, why is that so far? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back of my necklace. <laughs> yep. And then um, we've showed you those corner um, those corner tips before. Those corner so cuts. across and then. And then 45s. 45s. Yep. Um, and then turn it. And then voila. You and voila. Have a pillow. So you have a shrink wrapped pillow form. This was not just packing, so I hope you didn't throw it out. I know. I saw a bunch of people on the Kimberbell. Oh, on the it was they... shoved in the top, and it was, I I mean, I thought it was packing at first. Oh. So I just kind of, and then I'm reading it, and I'm like, oh, oh let's put that pillow. back. <laughs> that's the pillow. Yeah. So this is your pillow form. Um, if you use um, the other file, so the other file is a 6 by 10 This was using the 5 by 7 hoop, and it will finish your pillow out to be a 14 by 14 if you use the other one, um, it's not a full six by 10. Um, it doesn't balance out if you're doing the math in your head. It's, it doesn't do that, um, but it does a 16 by 16 finished pillow. So um, super nice. I mean, I suppose you could, you know, add borders or something if you wanted a bigger pillow. You yeah. certainly could do that um, if you would like. But um, I think this, this one is the six by 16 by 16. There we go. <laughs> Which way's up? Very cute. So Very I cute. just want to take a nap, but I'm going to end up with fuzzies. Me too. Obviously, everywhere. I'm yawning all of a sudden. It's not my fault. The I didn't do it. The sun is going down. That's what's doing it. It is getting dark outside. It is getting dark outside. Four freaking clock. I know. Crazy. All right. Well, um, look at that. 59 minutes and 17 seconds. I think that's pretty darn good. <laughs> there you go. All right. So. It is Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. We are all done. And now you guys have probably one of your six pieces if you were sewing along with us mm -hmm. sewn. So you just need to repeat. It is not a bad idea to take a break in between cutting because I'm not lying. The wrist is going to probably hurt if you sit down to do them all. Yes, there we go. Um, 
So, you know, I'm like whipping them out. The sewing actually doesn't take too long. No. So I'm like, oh, this is great. And then I sat down to cut and I was like, oh, this is not great. <laughs> and I literally had to go and I put ice on my wrist. It was that. I mean, it was bad. Yeah. It was super, super bad. Like, don't have to pee with buttoned pants because no. I really understand that. <laughs> it's just, just no. It doesn't. Mm -mm. Nope. So um, that is the winter 2020 Bella box. Right? And I think so that it's been fun. so great. And I'm so excited because I have all of mine sewn. Right? I'm so excited. I'm so I have close. two boxes home. I know. I missed just one thing out of. So um, it has been, um, this has been it's been really great. Yeah. We so, don't get to sew together very often We really at all. don't. You know, we teach different classes. And, yep. you know, we never have time to actually sit in front of a machine. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started working here, we had a employee so long after close one night and it was like yeah but what am i gonna do <laughs> you know? I, got, I can't do a project in two hours you know so i yeah. had this big tarp of stuff that i brought in <laughs> i sewed one thing and then packed my car up. <laughs> yeah yeah so i you know this has been great i love the this. you know the kits all pre-cut it's boom it's there you're yeah. ready to go um, it's been kind of like we went to go to our own Kimberbell event. Right. And we actually made, made all of the projects. projects. Yes. What a concept. Right? It is. So. I think we're going to have to do more stuff like this. I so think it's been fun. Speaking of Kimberbell events. Yeah. We do have one scheduled for first quarter next year. I can't wait. March 20th. Yeah. It's a, whatever the Saturday is. I currently have it only as the one day because we're probably still going to be doing virtual. Um, if that changes, we will add another day so mm -hmm. that there's um, more spots available. But it is, um, I'm excited. It's super yeah. cute. It's the Garden Guild, Garden Guild. And it has got some really, really cute designs. And I'm not a gardener. I mean, I like. I have a black thumb. I never used to. I have no idea what happened. It's like I moved and now I can't touch something or I kill it. I don't like the dirt. I don't mind the dirt. <laughs> I don't like the bugs in the dirt. Mm, yeah. I really don't like those. I like to but look I don't at mind it the dirt. Through the window. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a really so, outdoorsy person. <laughs> so you know, you, you live on like ten acres. There's I know, probably right? lots of outdoors that need to be taken care I of. Know. Does Dave just do it all? Yeah. Yeah. He does. Um so I, I try to help yeah. outside, but I have allergies. I'm like allergic to everything outside. So cutting the lawn for my son and I. We actually bought him a big mask, like a respirator the type. respirator mask mm -hmm. to be able to mow lawns in because it gets so bad sometimes. It's kind of, yeah. it's kind of funny. We bought that before all of this. I'm like, Hey honey, you have the perfect mask for this. And he was like, yeah, mom, I'm not wearing that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you met my husband, you know, um, he, he's not as bad about the direction of the lawn now because there's so much of it. But before I, I I'm, if I did it wrong, then it was, I would never hear a, I, it was just, it's just easier to let him do it. So <laughs> we're on eight, a little over eight acres. Yeah. And we mow almost all of it. Yeah. Um, and um, it wasn't all mown when we bought it. So mm -hmm. we've had a lot of work to do in the backyard. I say we, not me. Um, there was a broken backhoe that came, tractor that came with the house. And so he, they, they fixed the backhoe. And so now we can break down the, they, they used it as a motocross. <laughs> track in For the back so there's these hills yeah. and yeah so we broke down a lot of the hills and, and leveled things out and whatnot but i was allowed to mow the backyard we call it the back 40. Mm -hmm. yeah we call ours the back 40 too so the back 40 i was allowed to mow the front evidently i don't drive straight enough i don't know what it is but that was his purview you know you know no no you you could go i didn't get the back 40 done you can go do the back 40. i'm like okay so i got on my little john deere and i tooled around those zero turns are fun mm -hmm. and i had Put my bathing suit on because why not get a suntan while you're doing it right mm -hmm. so we have this train track that goes literally right that's the end of our property right and i would always get hung horns <laughs> whenever i'm mowing them i'm like hi you know i'm waving and because you're in your then i'm looking down and <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm like maybe i need to wear a tank top at least when i'm mowing the lawn not just a bathing suit top yeah yeah. Well, when we do our Kimberbell garden thing, neither of us will wear our bathing suit. <laughs> Guaranteed that will not happen. <laughs> but it will be a bug-free, um, Indiana, fun project. Yes. yes. No bugs. No bugs. No bugs. I don't like bugs. And you could stitch outside if you wanted to, but we'll be stitching. You on could. I'm we'll stitching inside. We'll, we'll be stitching inside. All right. So thank you guys so very much um, for joining us. I didn't 
actually see the numbers because I was over here. Did we hit them today? We did. Fantastic. Yeah, we so did fantastic. we will get all of the names prepped. Um, and we'll draw on Tuesday. Again. And we'll draw on Tuesday, which she's coming in um, on her vacation like I did last week. So that you yeah. guys, we will, you'll still get our entertainment. Yes, um, next Christmas week. entertainment. So Christmas entertainment. Um, so we will see you guys then. We will draw three more names and we'll dig through our bag of goodies and come up with something really great for you uh, The garden thing is called Garden uh, Guild. Guild. Yeah, G it's G-U-I-L-D. It is on the web. It is it's on, on our site. Class calendar. Yep. It's their. It's one of their newer ones. So, um, yep. It's their, They've got a couple new ones. Um, they have retired a couple. Um, I actually bought the kit for the Christmas one, and then we never ended up doing it because mm -hmm. all hell broke loose. Yes. Um, I don't know how. I know that they have limited. You know, so when those kits are out, um, we can't do that anymore. Um, I don't know if we'll still have kits available come like Christmas in July time mm -hmm. or, or whatnot, but that was a super cute one. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we can do that, but we'll have to wait. And see. I, Louisa thinks we should wear your swimsuits. <laughs> I don't think y'all would want to see that right now. Um, oh, the COVID-20 yeah. does not cover what's happened here. So um, yeah, no, no, I don't gonna, even know if I can fit in the suits. We're going to start doing the yeah. boo Pilates over uh, here. You know, we've talked about that. I really think we should do something. Yeah. we got the big TV. We can crap, pop something on there. Yeah, they do yoga next door. Why can't they we do? do it? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, look, thanks you can't so see much. Me. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. We'll see you Tuesday. Thanks for joining.